Neil Gittleman here with Piano Bench Chat number 33. Just keeps going on and on, doesn't it? You know, one thing that a lot of people say is that, you know, we kind of lose track of time during this crazy COVID era. Um, and in looking back over some of the Piano Bench Chats, I realized I found a new way to keep time, which is by seeing what I'm wearing. Because back in March when I started doing these things, this is kind of what I was wearing. I, I had a t-shirt on, but I had long pants and a fleece to keep warm in the early spring mornings. And now it's early fall mornings and I've gone through the summer with wearing t-shirts and shorts. And now I'm back to what I was wearing back in March. Uh, and you're probably doing the same, but we just keep on going and uh, hopefully music keeps you going through it the way it does for me. That was uh, the third movement of an early piano sonata by uh, Joseph, I see, I almost said Franz, I did. Jo Joseph Haydn, not Franz Joseph Haydn. Uh, last week I said I was gonna start working my way through the, the Haydn piano sonatas and also the Haydn symphonies. And uh, just by chance, uh, they're both minuet movements. Minuets were uh, aristocratic dances of the Baroque era, which remained popular during the classical era, which was Haydn's time. And the minuet is a very sort of staid and proper medium tempo sort of dance. It has to be medium tempo, or otherwise I couldn't even try to play it. Um, but even within the, the confines of that form, it gives you some elements of what makes Haydn a special composer. It's in two parts, and each part is repeated. So we begin, and he goes on, and he goes back to the beginning and repeats it again. Now the repeat, I think it's actually an important part of um, the minuet. And I always wonder, you know, why do minuets have repeats? All the Baroque dances do. And I think it has to do with what they were, which is they were dances for rich people to do, you know, after they had dinner and their servants played music for them and they danced. So if you were dancing to a minuet that your court composer had just written for you, it was a new piece of music. And the repeats give you a chance to hear the same music again. So maybe if you are a little surprised by something in the music the first time it comes around while you're dancing. Now, the second time it comes, you're gonna recognize the music and maybe you're gonna dance better. Maybe I'm making that up, but that's my, my sense of it. Um, one of the interesting things about this minuet, there's always interesting stuff in Haydn. Uh, think about the left hand. It starts off with short notes. The second phrase, the notes become connected, legato. So he changes things up. Or in the second half of the minuet, um, he starts softly. interesting in and of itself because it's one of the things that we often see in classical music Haydn and Mozart too. A melodic pattern that happens three times, which almost never happens in Baroque music, but three times in a row the same thing. The difference being that the third time he goes off in a different direction. So he starts the second half in the minuet like this. <laughs> the first time, second time, third time. So we hear the same thing. And then he's back to the beginning. surprise. Here the surprise is suddenly he gets loud. The, the volume of this piece has been medium and then it gets soft at the beginning of the second half and then it goes back to medium and then suddenly he gets louder and he brings in the bass part of 
the piano and the sound just kind of gets four times as big. Uh, I'll back up a little bit so you can hear. Here's the where the beginning music comes back. something surprising happens there. So that's the minuet that happened to come up today uh, in the piano sonatas. And then I turned to my other project of working through the uh, Haydn symphonies, and I'm in Haydn symphony number three right now, which was written, uh, I looked it up, it was written about six years before the piano sonata that you just heard. Uh, and lo and behold, I was on a minuet movement in the symphony as well. And this one's tricky, so I'm probably going to screw it up. But here's how it begins. difficult but as soon as I started playing that I thought that's kind of there's something strange going on because sometimes in Haydn there is you had this you wouldn't expect you wouldn't expect the cellos and basses and bassoons to be starting on that note to be in a, you'd expect something like that so why is it starting on a D instead of a G and the answer is if you if you look carefully at the music, and if I was playing it right and you heard it, here's what the first violins and the second violins and the first oboe and the second oboe are playing. And here's what the cellos and basses and the violas and the bassoons are playing. It's the exact same thing. It's a round, or a canon is the highfalutin musical term. So in this aristocratic dance, and this is a symphony Haydn would have written for his boss, Prince Nicholas Esterhazy. So it would have been played as entertainment in Prince Esterhazy's castle. He's writing a minuet, but he's already kind of making it fancier for the symphony than he might have in the piano sonata with that canon between the two voices and that sort of intricacy. Uh, it's one of the things that makes Haydn special because you never know what he's going to do. He almost always is going to surprise you with something. And, uh, well, surprises should be in the air because we're coming up on Halloween. And the Dayton Performing Arts Alliance has a wonderful Halloween surprise for you. It is our Halloween Spooktacular stream, which will premiere, get this, on Halloween. Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the practically the last time we get to say Eastern Daylight Time, for about a year, almost. Uh, that will be the first stream. This is a free stream, uh, thanks to the generosity of the DPNL Foundation, which underwrites our family series. And uh, it's all kinds of Halloween fun from the Dayton Philharmonic, from Dayton Ballet, and Dayton Opera. If you miss that premiere stream at 3 o'clock on Saturday, October 31st, you might you know, be busy getting your costume ready. Don't worry, it will be available for on-demand streaming for a while at daytonperformingarts.org slash streams. So uh, have fun trick-or-treating, dressing up, be safe, don't do anything silly, and uh, stick with us and we'll have more music and more streams and I guess Piano Bench chat number 34 next week and I'll probably be wearing a parka. But you never know. It's Ohio in October. I could be back to wearing shorts and a t-shirt again. Take care. See you next week.